At the heart of every farm Come on, girlie. Come on. <laughs> is a family. Look at that. That's absolutely stunning. Working hard to make a living. You're a clever girl. You've got a wee boy. Whatever nature throws at them. A lesser income. It's the worst I've seen. It. Putting it all on the line. It takes three generations to build something up, but it only takes one to ruin it. In these challenging times. Farming is like professional gambling. At 48,000. Six families. There's nothing wrong with her. She just doesn't want to come in. Open up their farms and lives. No. <laughs> I did not expect this learning curve, to be honest. It's been stressful. Oh, yeah. Revealing their struggles. I honestly thought the calf would be dead. And sharing their triumphs. This is a field of dreams. We could get anything here. Spring. Sun, warmth and new grass. These are months of abundance and new life. When farmers focus their energy on nurturing the next generation. The East Nuke of Fife. A coastal region in East Central Scotland, dotted with picturesque fishing villages. With mild weather and fertile rolling hills, it's ideal for farming. Kalesi Farm covers 970 acres, a mix of arable and livestock. Good boy. It's a family-run business. The 74-year-old Ronnie Black, joined by his two sons, Mike and Pete. We're lucky it works well. And we're lucky we have individual interests within the farm that we can all be our own boss, do our own thing, but still have the help of your brother or your father. Pedigree breeding is the Black's passion. Mike keeps a hundred Suffolk sheep. While for Pete and Ronnie, it's their award-winning Clydesdales. A rare breed of working horse that almost vanished in the 1970s and is now classed as at risk. Today, Pete is checking on this year's mums-to-be. Fifteen foals are due this spring. This is a field of dreams. We're still dreaming at this stage of the game. We could get anything here. After an 11-month gestation, the family are on red alert for foaling. Any breeder of anything, a pregnant animal, you're dreaming. It's brilliant. You just, is this the one? Is it, if you're as a racehorse, is this the one going to win the Grand National? For us, is this the one that's going to produce the Highland Show winner? You've got to have a dream, haven't you? You're a good girl. Come on, lass. Mace, could you swing that gate for me, please? One mare, Emma, needs stabling. It's OK, keep it coming. With such precious cargo, they like to be present during foaling. But horses give birth with little warning. Pete has spotted a big clue. Yeah, there you go. Perfect bit of wax. Look under our udder. Emma's oozing colostrum. That's a perfect sign of your mare's about to fall. That's a nice bit of wax. Could have a baby by midnight, if we're lucky. Good girl, good girl. Good At Kalesi Farm, Good girl. Pregnant mums get the five-star pamper treatment. It's a bit like going to the hairdressers. If she, if she feels better at the end of this, it'll make her for a better evening for her. Wouldn't you, my love? If 
if I was a horse that was about to have a baby, I would quite like to have my hair done and my legs washed. Oh no, you're okay, you're okay. Pete has been mentored by one of the breed's experts, his dad, Ronnie. My wife thinks I'm a lunatic uh, doing this at this time of night, but it's just some people walk their dogs at this time of night. I just make up a few feeds for my horses. In the world of Clydesdales, Ronnie is Mr. Do Big, do. top breeder, show judge. Hello, Snooks and former president of the Clydesdale Horse Society. Here you go, that will keep you going, won't it? Father passed away in 1989, and then the mares he had at that time, I just took them on. So I suppose I've been in, under com complete control since 1989. Now I'm losing it because his nibs is taking over. But that's great. It's good. It's good you Just this is history repeating itself, really. And it's great to have the youth involved. This will be Emma's third foal. Her first didn't survive. These horses, they need to be foaled quite quickly. You know, they're big, tough looking animals, but they're really quite soft when things go wrong. Horses foal fast. In the wild, they're most vulnerable when giving birth. If everything is coming as it should, it's usually very, very quick. Ronnie's seen complications at every stage. Coming the wrong way, maybe. Just the same as a lamb or a calf. Leg back, nightmare. So first thing, if we can find two legs and a nose, you're relaxed a bit. That's all we can do, really, and hope. Isn't it, Pet? You must be getting close, darling, eh? You want peace and quiet. Around 80% of horses choose the safety and peace of darkness for foaling. Close-circuit cameras mean Ronnie and Pete can watch from the house. It's now 9.30 p.m. Well, at this moment of time, it's all apprehension, isn't it? You just don't know what's going to happen, so you're, you're just hoping it's all OK. They could be in for a long night. <laughs> for every farmer, early starts and late nights are part and parcel of the job. Two-thirds of farmers report lack of sleep is a problem. But there are still plenty willing to put in the hours. A hundred and fifty miles north of Fife is Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands. It's a magnet for tourists, monster seekers and day trippers. The surrounding hills present an inhospitable terrain for farmers. One extended family have worked this land for decades, generation after generation, continuing and updating Highland farming traditions. Cousins Donald Fraser and David Gervin run hill farms 20 miles apart on the banks of the loch. You can put them in the tube. Yeah, put them in the tunnel. It's coming, here it comes. Both men were born into farming, unlike their partners, Joanna and Barbara, who were learning on the job. So you don't want three cockerels, right? <laughs> you don't want any cockerels. On the Fraser's farm, closer to Inverness, Donald's partner, Joanna, is striving to find her place. I've always wanted to be involved, but it's been difficult because as soon as I moved here, I had a baby. 
think they think I slow things down. I do slow things down. And I want to learn and I want to be part of it. It's hard. The Fraser's lamb and calf at the same time, which makes spring by far their busiest season. Joanna is keen to pitch in, but she's a complete beginner. It's 4.30 a.m. Joanna is clocking on for her very first shift in the lambing shed. I actually love this time in the morning. It's so peaceful. For her first lesson, she will be shadowing the expert, her father-in-law, Donald Senior. They have 550 pregnant mums due to give birth in the next 48 hours. Are you looking at that sheet lying down? She's just sleeping. <laughs> It's the first week of lambing. So we just have a slow walk round and just look. Donald only intervenes if the ewe is in trouble. Sitting there, just ready to be born. There's a lot of poo. There, there's it being born, isn't it? Wow, that was amazing. She's busy getting along. And cleaned off now. It's quite nice getting up so early in the morning. You feel like you are a proper farmer. And Donald is still asleep in bed, so I feel like superwoman. It's nice that, that she's keen and she wants to do it. It's not easier for her coming into a situation. You know, when there's nobody else about, first thing in the morning, she comes out. And, it's just the two of us. Right, I'm away to see another lot of cows, OK? So what will I do? Just walk round and check. Anyone lambing? No. I'm not 100% sure if I know what a sheep looks like when it's lambing. What about you? What are you doing? Nothing. I feel clueless amongst all these sheep. It means nothing to me, if I'm honest. Quite often as well, my God, that sheep looks dead. But they're not, so that's good. It's not just the ewes giving birth this morning. Donald Senior has been called to help his son with a difficult calving. She's pretty tight, eh? She yeah. He suspects the mother is suffering from milk fever, a calcium deficiency. She's weak, and her unborn calf might have died. She sure, don't go. Yeah. I think he's alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's alive. Definitely, I was just checking. <laughs> um, he bit my finger. Or she bit my finger. She's done it twice, so I'm certain. Hey. It's Joanna. <laughs> um, I'm right in the middle. I've got my hand on the cow, getting filmed. <laughs> OK, bye. She seems a wee bit lethargic. With the mother too weak to push, they have to use a calving jack. Here's the head. Doesn't look like too big a calf. They need to pull the calf out. It was a push. Oh, girly. Mm. Just want that head to pop out. See how he's quite yellow? See that? Dad was right. She's probably had a bit of milk fever. I didn't think that was going to end up like that. I honestly thought the calf would be dead. 
it just went perfectly. The calf is female, a new heifer to join the herd. The worst part about being a livestock farmer is death. You don't like to see things die, but it's part and parcel of it. It's like financial for us, but then it's like, we like our cows, so if you've got a cow that doesn't have a calf, it's, it's not nice. Back at the lambing shed. Oh, that looks like a water bag. Is it? Joanna's in charge. I don't know. Oh, God, I think she's lambing. I think... I don't know. Do I just stand back? She looks like she's giving birth. Is it her? She's giving birth. I don't really know what to do. Hey. I might be totally wrong, but I think there's maybe a single sheep lambing. Do I just leave it? Aye, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just be. I'm just. I'm just getting bored now. Bye. I'm desperate to pull a lamb out. I'm not going to lie, but I think I've got to earn my stripes. Don't I? <laughs> I can't just jump straight in and start pulling the lambs out. The lambing season lasts for three weeks. Joanna's next shift is tomorrow. 4.30 a.m. sharp. Further down the west bank of Loch Ness, at Cousin David's farm. The lessons in lambing start young. Go and get some lambs, Lucy. At just eight years old, Lucy is joining her parents on their rounds. Mum Barbara has spotted a ewe in trouble. You watch, come closer, closer, closer. Good catch. The ewe is a Wiltshire horn. Well, we're just going to check and see. You hold her head. She's carrying twins. Yeah, it's coming backwards. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's okay. There we go, Carly. Can you go and get me an injection out of there? This one's coming the right way, so... The head's there, and we've got one leg. Oh, there we go, Lally. Good girl. Knees, Bob. Lucy's showing all the signs of a farmer in waiting. Why is there so much blood? Some bleed more than others, Lucy. It's a bit like humans when they have babies. Some of them will bleed more than others. Right, let's get in. Did you enjoy that, Lucy? Yeah. She's happy. She's happy it's your babies. Next job, to gather the third lamb from triplets. Mum can only feed and rear too. Another opportunity for a bit of homeschooling. See if what what is it we look for it? when we... Well, the bit, the bit's hanging down from their tummy. Once the it's navel. black, yeah, the navel. Once it's black and it's curved up, like curvy, then we take them. Oh, why is that? Because um... if it was red and it was all slimy, what would that mean? These ones will have red and slimy ones. Why would that be? Because they're just born. That's right. Right, <laughs> let's go and get them. Yeah. <laughs> by hook and by crook. They're rounded up. And Lucy's theory lessons turn practical. Good job, Lucy.
All the pet lambs in need of extra attention are housed in the orphan pen. They're all boys. How did we manage that, Lucy? And you've called them Angus and Gregor. And Lucy. And number 18 is Lucy. <laughs> they now have 38 to feed and care for. Looks like young farmer Lucy will have her hands full. Phil, shall I go up now? Good idea. A hundred and fifty miles south at Kalesi Farm in Fife, it's 2 a.m. The Clydesdale mare has gone into labour. Good girl. Good girl, you're okay, darling. That's good, everything we want's here. Feet are here, head's here. Pete's anxious. He's worried that Emma might roll and distress her fall. Oh, what a good girl. This feels quite a big fall, to be fair. He phones for backup. Oh, that's... Oh, that's good girl. That's I'm very little pressure. She's just, she's doing it herself. I'm just helping her along. Oh, now fully. Oh, now fully. Come on, fully. Oh, don't make me go. Okay. okay. This way. There we go. Oh, oh, my darling, hello. Hello. Welcome to the world. Oh. Brilliant. Oh, no. It's a cult. It's nicely marked. White naps, lovely, beautiful body colour. Dad Ronnie is keen to meet the new arrival. It's a miracle. All these births are miracles. So this could be her lucky year. It's now vital Mum's afterbirth is safely delivered. The umbilical cord is left to break naturally. See, this here is. If you see that, it's coming away itself now. First impressions, it's quite a big fall. Oh, 40. Oh, there's, he's trying to get up already. Monster. Hey, monster. Oh, yeah, bravo. Look at the body hair he has. It's lovely. This is why we do it. Can't beat that. Waited a year, he's put a bit of work in. Hey, presto. Hey, darling. 23 minutes after birth, mother and son get to meet for the first time. Oh, oh you're a bit quick. You're a bit quick. Everything at this moment in time is textbook. She's cleansed. She's on her feet. She's licking her full. Having had problems with Emma's colostrum in the past, Peter's milking her to be sure the foal gets the nourishing first milk. He's not taking any chances. Hip, there you go. Wow. That's fab. I don't know what time it is, but that's pretty quick for a foal to be on its feet already. Oh, my boy. Wow, that is a big foal. Quite happy with that, anyway. Hey, my darling. You've a clever girl, you've got a wee boy. In the wild, a foal is easy prey, so his instinct is to get up on his feet. 
his first taste of the ups, oh. and downs of life ahead. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Time for the breed judge to give him a closer inspection. Well, the markings are just pleasing to the eye. You know, they talk about high whites. Well, he's white above the knees and above the hocks. So that gives you a, an impression of height as well. Just a beauty competition, really. He'll learn to suckle within a couple of hours, but a little guidance never hurts. The good signs for us is that he's looking, even if he doesn't take the teat just now, at least, at least he's heading in the right direction for us. He has all the hallmarks for success, but will need to be closely monitored through his first few days of life. Perfect. Good feeling in the heart. At this moment in time, it's just nice to watch it and appreciate it for what it is itself. Spring newborns spell hard work for livestock farmers. At this time of year, more than any other, stamina and fitness is key. Islands of Orkney. Lying just north of John O'Groats, they mix ancient Viking treasures with great natural beauty. Thirty-two-year-old Sean Cursiter. Tara, lie down. Is a young farmer trying to make his way in a difficult and unpredictable industry. I've always been quite ambitious, whether it was like with work or sport or anything like that, you kind of always wanted to do your best and try your hardest. The family farm, Laga, stretches across 700 acres on the biggest island, mainland. Three generations of cursitors have farmed here since the 1950s, and Sean's dad and uncle are now in charge. They're both still young, they've got a lot of farming left in them, so I kind of expect just to get something handed to me, Ken, and I, I don't think I would want that. I always think the most satisfying things you do in life is the things you work hard for yourself rather than what's just given to you. Sean dreams of owning his own place. But in the meantime, his brute strength is a huge asset on the family farm. This year, it's a bumper lambing season. With 1,040 ewes, you can't move for lambs. Taking sunbathing to a whole new level here, I think. Hey. I always think lambing's like trying to sprint, sprint a marathon every day. <laughs> Lambing lasts for three weeks, with shifts running day and night. I'm just giving him a top up with this good stuff just to make sure he's getting enough. Sean's on the morning shift, along with his dad. He just wants his mum. <laughs> my great granddad st started, and my granddad started, and knew me feathers, Tina only. It, it takes. It takes three generations to build something up, but if it only takes one to ruin it. I don't want to be the one that ruins it. These lambs are the farm's harvest and its financial future. Twins are a welcome sight. It's always been your, your first lamb keeps you and the second lamb's the profit. And uh, the policy here is just to try and put this many sheep out the door with two lambs as possible, because that is the sheep that makes you money. 
19-year-old Tegan is helping out this year. Like Sean, she's a young farmer looking to get a foothold. No feet are boot, so I'll try and flick. Try and flick at least one foot up. Just pop this one through, just new. So there, she's pushed her shell. That's what you want. So there should be a pair in her. That's what you want, two, two good lambs like that. This is my first time helping out uh, here. I just love this kind of work and good experience um, for, you know, when I'm older, you learn so much um, from so much here. I'm very open to taking young folk in, like, because it's, it's a problem getting young people to do this type of work. Not a lot of folk wants to do it. Young Tegan's came in this last few days. She's made a hell of a difference, just that extra pair of hands. She's young and she's keen, and there's lots of energy in her, and she's, you can, it makes a hell of a difference when you have that around. With very few trees for shelter in Orkney, it's better for the ewes to lamb in the sheds. Not everyone obliges. I'm going to have to catch each one and see who's got lambs still in them, I think. Two yows found the same spot to lamb, and I'm just trying to work, work out which is hand lambs and which one's no. Hughes can try to pinch another's lamb. Good lamb. Right. I'll try and get ahead of this monkey too. And... Flooded with the maternal bonding hormone oxytocin, they make mistakes. Hey, boy, you come to join the party. I'm just going to pull it out and, and shift, shift it along to a different place of the field and then they, they should be mothered up with the right lambs. That is OK, I think. So many new arrivals come with a stack of admin. Ear tagging, logging and general health checking. It just takes a wee minute for the lambs to learn to go with the mums and that, uh, but she's mother and I'm fine. This definitely keeps you fit. Like, uh, usually lose a bit of weight in the lambing time, but it's needed, to be fair. Sean throws himself into his work. If success takes youth and stamina, <laughs> These two are going for gold. <laughs> it's one of my favourite bits on the farm up here. Check these last thing at night, it's quite a nice bit to go home to. In April, there are almost 16 hours of daylight for Orkney's busy farmers. One hundred and seventy miles south on the Fraser's farm, it's almost first light. Joanna's ready for her second lesson in the lambing sheds. Today, she's hoping to earn her midwifery stripes. I'll just keep walking nights nice because that seems to be the best advice I've had from a farmer's wife, actually, was that um, just taking your time and really looking at them is when you find a problem. It's a big plus that she's actually here for the start. She, she could be lying in her bed. But, you know, she's, she's, she's keen and wants to come out and see it. What's happening? Yeah. She's got a three lambs inside her and she's maybe just just not feeling just right. So I'm, I'm going to give her a, a, a little boost here. Donald Senior has been lambing for 50 years. Well, you learn by your mistakes. <laughs> it sort of comes as second nature after a while. Still not quite second nature for Joanna. 
in some ways I wondered if I'd gone to another farm that wasn't Donald's family farm, that it might have been easier in a way to learn the ropes, just because I don't want to let anybody down, whereas perhaps if I was at another farm that I didn't have any emotional connection to, I wouldn't be as, like, like scared of disappointing them. After an hour and a half on duty, Joanna spots an ill lamb. I think it's dying. I'm going to make an executive decision and put it in the heat box. Hope that's open. I don't think it's got long. It's not looking good. It's definitely breathing. Hey, um, I found a lamb the, with the mum that had the prolapse. It was still slightly alive. I put it in the heat box. The warmth of the heat box should revive the lamb. Meanwhile, 500 pregnant mothers need breakfast. Like Donald's dad said to me last year that farming's a way of life. And I was kind of fighting against the farming life because it can get a bit, it can get hard because Donald works like every day of the year. Because he's a mixed farmer, when he's not lambing, he's sowing, he's calving, he's got harvests. And sometimes it means going to weddings on your own, going to family events on your own, and it, that can be quite hard. I do get quite resentful, but if I'm out seeing how hard his life is and what he's actually doing, I have a bit more empathy for him, I think. If you're not part of that way of life, how can you understand it? A hundred and seventy miles north in Orkney. Good spot. Sean is working flat out. Steady, wee boys. Do get out of there. His efforts at lamb crowd control <laughs> aren't working. <laughs> Steady, steady, come on. These lambs are Sean's own starter flock of Romneys. They're just wanting them to go back to where they think the right place to be is, but they usually beat them in the end. The lambs are right to be jumpy. They're about to get their tails. And in some cases, testicles ringed for docking. Get these lambs in. Ever the entrepreneur, Sean has built an ingenious conveyor belt designed to save precious time. I just bought some rollers off eBay and I don't know what they were for, but it does the job anyway. If nothing else, it makes for a more laid-back experience. It's an amazing thing. Like it, it, you seem to get them in this thing, and they just live like they're sunbathing or something. But boot the sun. Be handy for changing that piece this thing. <laughs> Bit like a factory production line, isn't it? An elastic band round the tail cuts off the blood supply. But you can see the ta tail's just died off, it leaves a stump. And uh, it's just so much easier, more better for management. You kind of, as the sheep gets older, you kind of less wool and tails, it keeps them cleaner. These lambs represent Sean's farming future. He invested in 60 animals six years ago and now has 290. I'm quite happy with these lambs, so I've, I bought two different tops this year. I invested a bit more, I paid a bit of money. I think hopefully if they keep doing, they'll do all right. It seems to be quite a high percentage of females which makes the most money. 
A few of the best boys are kept for topping. Leave the nuts on the next three, OK? It's a job we get folk to come here on a Sunday morning and work with sheep with the family well. <laughs> and for free. That's the last one. The smallest one too, I think. 300 done in just two hours. Oh, he's not like him. <laughs> Sean's homemade conveyor belt has done the trick in record time. Farmers are always looking for ways to inch up profits. Whether it's homemade inventions, or meticulously developed bloodlines, even the tiniest improvement can make a difference. Almost 300 miles south in Fife, at Kalesi Farm, the Black family have just welcomed a leggy new arrival with an impressive genetic pedigree. Are you having a good day? Oh, that's better, isn't it? Mayor Emma has produced a large male foal one of only 200 Clydesdale foals expected to be born in the UK this year. This is a good foal. This is a nice foal. I like this guy. Ah, oh, he's good. He's good. This boy keeps you cheery. You don't know what his future is going to hold, but for the age of him, the power of him, I'm quite delighted, to be honest with you. The, the fact that there's more brothers and sisters coming makes you even more excited for them because we might just be finding the one we're looking for. But despite the fool's impressive appearance, Pete is uneasy. He's drinking well, he's a big, massive, strong foal. She didn't lose that much milk, so in theory his blood should be fine. But this mare has history of her colostrum not being good enough and us having to uh, give her foals uh, transfusions. The foal might not have enough antibodies from mum's colostrum. He could need a transfusion to protect him from infection. For our own peace of mind, we'll not be 100% happy till we know what his blood score is. Having lost one of Emma's foals, Good boy. they want to be sure this one survives. Breeding horses isn't for the faint-hearted, they have to be tough to cope with the bad days. Pete's called in vet Selena to do a blood test. Thank you. You're all right. He's pretty tough. We're taking a, a blood sample just to make sure that the foal's got enough um, IgG, which is just a fancy name for antibodies that he should have got through the colostrum in the first six hours of life. If they don't take enough, they can be a much higher risk of joint ill, navel ill, that sort of thing. So it's just a really quick and easy way of making sure that he's basically got the best start possible um, and reduce the risk of any infections. What number do we need? Anything over 800 is classed as, as good. Time's up. Yep, Bingo. perfect. So 918, so yeah, shouldn't need to do anything else with that wee foley. He's got enough to look him right, hopefully. <laughs> it's fab. All right. See you, Paul. Right. Well done, guys. All is well. He's as strong and healthy as he looks. Pete's eight-year-old daughter, Maisie... You can come in, it's OK. ..is keen to meet the new arrival. Here you go. You can go and see him. You had a good day at school? Yeah. Yeah? Hi, Tom. Come in, see you You like him? Yeah, nice boy. 
Well, Ben Marshall. We call him Marshall. What about Rocky? Oh, oh yeah. Rocky's a good name. Rocky, yeah, Rocky's a good name. So Rocky it is. The newest Clydesdale in the ring. Fighting fit and full of potential. The love of breeding Clydesdales has been passed from father to son. One generation taking over from the next. But succession in farming is complicated. Just 19% of British farmers plan to fully retire and most work on far longer than the rest of the population. 300 miles north in Orkney, Sean was born and raised on Lago Farm, the small holding his great-grandfather started. Lady Thais, good girl. Fern. Now 32, he's still waiting his turn. Oh, a perfect future would likely be to have a, a wife that was far too pretty for me. That would be a good start. And then uh, two or three young bairns. This is going on for generations, you can, so I'd like to keep it going if I can. Today, he's checking on the mums and lambs out on the hills. Just doing the rounds, just trying to get round all the field, fields of sheep. Once a day. <coughs> Don't like the look of this one here. That's us say another problem we get chointle. It's like an infection goes in through its navel and like his front knee joints have just been taken over with. You can feel them, they're swollen, just like arthritis. Joint ill is a bacterial infection. It can spread quickly through the lamb's bloodstream and cause severe damage to their joints. <laughs> this one's probably not going to get better from it because he's been treated already. I know he's in six days worth of treatment when I know they've got that marks on them. I don't really know what to do with them, to be honest, because it'll only get worse, like it'll just riddle through his front end, you know? It's been a wet spring, and lambs are susceptible to arthritic infections. He's a good lamb, it's a shame, and his mum's there, and she still likes him. What I'll do is I'll try and corner her and take her in. Stay there. How are you doing? That'll do. That'll do. I'll maybe give that lamb one more course treatment. It probably won't work, but at least if I keep them together, she still loves this lamb. Like if that lamb was to die off outside, she would lose her instinct a wee bit. So I'll keep them together. A good mother is a valuable asset in any flock. Everything I'm doing is to kind of look after and care for the, the sheep that's here. And uh, it's satisfying if you can cure a problem or make a problem better. You're not going to fix them all. I'll probably not be able to fix this lamb. But we've tried our best. See, she doesn't even like me hand being there. That, that's good to see. Like, that's the mothering instinct you like to see. If she's going to try hard, I'm going to try hard for her type thing. So even though it's extra work, like, it's, uh, it's probably worth doing. Being a farmer and coping with death is tough, mentally and physically. Sean has his own ways of coping. This is what I do for fun. I'd be totally lost to it, to be honest. Mental health is probably not just a very healthy thing. In the industry, a lot of farms, they might have money worries and they might get a 
bad spell in lambing or a bad calving. You can, there's, there's nothing to save a farmer from those kind of stresses. What I do in here probably levels me out. <laughs> this is my very manly protein shaker. I bought it for the colour. Sean built this DIY gym seven years ago. Yeah, I just bought, bought some steel and put it together in the workshop. It's just a cubicle matting, so it's, it's meant for cattle, but it's, so it turns out it works quite well in a gym too, so... He needs to be in tip-top condition for the shearing season, which kicks off next week. <sighs> you can't just go and shear 250 sheep or to 350 sheep cold. If I can get, like, a two weeks before I go away just to condition the body, like, I can transition into shearing a wee bit easier. Every year, he shears his way up the UK, starting in Cornwall. I can make a kind of yearly wage out of shearing for two and a half months. Every penny made will take him one step closer to funding his farming ambitions. By Loch Ness in the Highlands on the Fraser's farm, lambing season is coming to an end. It's time for apprehensive apprentice Joanna to conquer her fears. I've definitely researched all the theory. I guess being a teacher is all about research. The more you try, the more, more you're going to learn. I think you're definitely, definitely someone who needs to learn through experience <laughs> rather than being told. Because <laughs> you don't no, like being true. told. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm not very good at actually the practical stuff. You just need to get stuck in there, into the gunk, into the goo, everything that goes with it. Wait. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> The ewe chosen for her first attempt has been in labour for too long. Well, you want me to grab her? Right, you got her. Hold on. Right, turn her head. Turn her head round. Just see if you can pop the legs out and straighten them. Can't get my hand in. We get a bit of lube, could we? Oh, she's in pain. No, no, it's just part of lambing. I'm helping her. That's it. Just give it a right pull and the leg will pop. It's almost coming. You're almost there. That's it. Well done. It's massive. Yeah, it's a big lamb. Okay, wait, I can't just push it. Okay, go. So push it. Really difficult. Oh, there we go. And down there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well done, just check it serious. Just give it a rub, yeah. Like that? Yeah, just give it a rub. Looks up and going. It's coughing, that's what you want. And she has got a lovely big bag of milk. He is breathing, so we're just gonna pull back and leave them to it and see if they bone. Well done. You did well. You didn't lose, you stayed calm. It was just a bit of a monster of a lamb. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah, it was huge. It's not what I thought it was. It's like it's really hard to even pull their legs. I feel like I'm going to dislocate them, and you need, you need a lot of strength, don't you? Well, Donald's a very compassionate and understanding person. I think you are, aren't you? You're, you don't get stressed, and he doesn't make me stressed. He's very always the calming person. So I'm quite highly strung sometimes. <laughs> We're definitely two opposites. Calm is what's needed now as Donald must guide Joanna through a much trickier delivery. The ewe has already had one lamb, but needs help birthing its twin. Her first lamb's taken a long time to lamb, as you can see by the color of it. The yellow stain is meconium. The lamb has got stressed during birth and its bowels have opened. Just get in there, have a look. Oh, there's a wee tongue hanging out. I don't know what it is. Needs to go, go in further. You need to get right in. Oh, it's so hot. Yeah, it's nice. On a cold day, it's pretty warm in there. Donald, I don't know what's in there. There's Can you feel of... anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to find a lamb. She's been arched. My arm was right up to the Yeah, yeah, well, lambs could be right down here. Oh. She's not really doing anything. She's, 
Keep going, see what comes. Yeah, she's pushing. So straight out and then down. You put his hand behind his head if you want some more, yeah. Oh, down and round, yeah. See how, see how yellow that is? There's, they're kind of needing to get out of there because she's not getting on with it. And is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fighting fit. I literally thought I was going to walk into the lambing shed, grab a sheep, pull a lamb out, and everyone would be like, wow, what a natural. <laughs> I did not expect this learning curve, to be honest. It's been stressful. I've been on like an emotional roller coaster with this, and I think getting up at half four has accelerated the emotions, in all honesty. You've done well because you've been working. You're a teacher, you've been working as well on doing the lambing. I've got kids. Yes, we have got kids as well, yeah. <laughs> Do you have more respect for me? <laughs> I've got more respect for your dad. <laughs> your dad does a lot. The life of a farmer isn't for everyone. Hard work, long days, and inevitable failures. But when the highs come along, everything else is forgotten. At Kalesi Farm, it's a big day for two-day-old Rocky. Come on, then. Come on, my boy. We're just going to let him out for his very first run in run outside. This is probably one of the best rewards for all the late nights and hard work is when you see a, a new mum and her baby out having a wee skipping about. It's his first chance to stretch those impressive legs. And we're delighted with him. He's marked to perfection. High whites is what they like. If you were to paint a model, you would you would be close to that, maybe. For all farmers, there's joy in new life. And that joy is all the sweeter when the new addition preserves the legacy of an at-risk breed. Look at his ears. He's fab. You're fab, aren't you, wee man? Next time. There's chaos on the cattle run for Joanna and Donald. Start calling the cattle, guys! Ah! Pete's having a bad hair day in the heavy horse salon. That doesn't it look good. It's a bit like a mullet, isn't it? And the life of a cow and calf hang in the balance for David and Barbara. The longer she's left like that, yeah, yeah. the viability of a calf, if it is alive, just let's get out. Let's get it out. Mm -hmm.